Welcome back. You're still watching Morning Live. Now, as South Africans prepare for winter and a fifth wave of COVID-19, numerous studies have shown the antiviral effects of spirulina, with one study showing that it may help reduce severe COVID-19 risk by 70%. The study published in the peer review uh, journal Marine Biotechnology monitored the production of the immune system protein. Results showed a 70% reduction when optimum quantities of of spirulina extract were added. Bloemfontein-based general practitioner Dr. Paulo de Valderos joins us now on Zoom to share more on these findings. Dr. Paulo, good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. I mean, tell us about a study that shows that spirulina may help reduce severe COVID-19 by 70%. Yes, so look, uh, spirulina has been studied for over 30 years for its properties. Spirulina is a food it's, it's actually an algae which grows in, uh, in, in water environments. So in Great Lakes, like Lake Chad in, uh, in, the, in the Republic of Chad in North Central Africa, and it is farmed for commercial purposes. Um, so there, there, there are various types of research. The research you're referring to, what they've done there is that they grew spirulina under L LED lights uh, instead of solar light, and they found that it reduced the production or, uh, by the cells of tumor necrosis factor, which is a pro-inflammatory substance, by 70%. Um, uh, you see, what happens is that um, uh, our immune systems has got a normal response when it is invaded by a virus. And that normal response is to promote inflammation. It increases blood pressure, blood clotting, and it produces free radicals. But this is normally done in a controlled manner. One of the regulators of this normal response is a receptor, uh, which is found in great numbers in lung cells called ACE2, A-C-E, ACE2. Mm -hmm. Now, the virus that causes COVID-19 uses these receptors, these ACE2 receptors, to gain entry into the lung cells. And when it does that, it blocks the receptor from regulating the immune system. It blocks the receptor from switching off the protein hormone that in, drives the immune response. And when that happens, the immune response becomes uncontrolled, unregulated inflammation, blood pressure, blood clotting, and that leads to tissue damage and eventual multi-organ failure. Mm. Now, previous research prior to the one you've mentioned has shown that spirulina downgrades this protein hormone that drives the immune response. In other words, it kind of takes over the job of the ACE receptor that is temporarily out of order. But it also upgrades these ACE2 receptors. So it is highly beneficial. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, South Africans are preparing for winter as we head into that season. It's the cold and flu season. What do we do to mitigate the situation where, you know, we are ready for winter? You know, how do we refine our nutrition and lifestyle to boost our immunity? That's a very good question, and you have mentioned two very important things, nutrition and lifestyle. I, f I personally find that the biggest challenge is discipline. You know, we, we basically know what we should do, but we, we tend not to do it. <laughs> um, keep in mind that the immune system is, is not only activated by a bacteria or a virus. Mm. The immune system is activated by anything that promotes inflammation, such as physical trauma indirectly by emotional trauma, because emotional trauma will cause the release of cortisol, the stress hormone, and that in turn uh, pro will promote inflammation. It is also switched on if you consume pro-inflammatory foods, such as fried foods and uh, uh, refined foods, processed foods. So the idea would be to make sure that your immune system is ready to take care of a real threat. Mm. Because a processed food is not a, a threat, like a virus or a bacteria, yet your immune system responds in a similar manner. So you are wasting resources, if I can put it that way. Mm -hmm. If you look at your, way, at your immune system as an army, it should be ready to deal with real threats, like a virus, like a bacteria, mm -hmm. threats that can cause an infection. So we should make sure that, as you said, our nutrition is correct, you know, fruits and vegetables, uh, uh, natural foods, uh, as I said, not fried foods, not processed foods, if at all possible. Uh, fast foods are not the healthiest foods, obviously. Um, something that's very important is smoking. 
uh, or rather the cessation of smoking, one should stop smoking immediately because that continuously activates the immune system. And remember that continual activation doesn't only uh, waste immune system resources, the soldiers as it were, but it spends an incredible amount of energy, which energy is required by other body systems to perform functions which go without being performed and over a long period of time will lead to uh, dysfunction and other, and other conditions. How do we also do that for kids, or for children? I mean, there are a lot of supplements on, on the shelves. The moment you walk into a pharmacy, there are a lot of those, even for children, even for um, adults as well. Where do you even begin when you're a parent and you want to get your child the best ones? Yeah, that is, uh, it is exactly what you've just said. It's, if you walk into a pharmacy or a health shop, it's, it's, it's very difficult. It's daunting, in fact, to try to choose what. Do you choose by price? Do you choose by label? So I think consumers must do a little bit of homework. Um, in, in case of spirulina that we were discussing, the source is very, very important mm -hmm. because spirulina acts like a sponge, so it absorbs everything from the environment. So if there are heavy metals, such as mercury, for example, pollution, it will absorb that. So the source is important. The drying process is very, very important. Um, in terms of other supplements, the, the, the process by which it is put together in a laboratory and the, and the proper rules. Um, and then also the packaging in the case of spirulina. Once it is in a powder form, in a tablet form, spirulina is subject to being affected by light in a detrimental manner. So it needs to be protected by light. Uh -huh. um, in terms of spirulina, there is a product in the market called Marcus Rora spirulina that sort of ticks all these boxes. And in terms of spirulina, spirulina is a food, remember? Mm -hmm. The fact that it is in tablet form, it's just the way, one of the ways in which it is marketed. It's also available in powder form. It can be added to smoothies. So anybody can have it from any age, basically. Oh, so they do sell it just like they sell um, um, collagen powder. Is it in the same form? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a powder. You can buy it as a powder and then you put it, you can mix it in juice or water if you, if you can stomach the taste. Okay, then you can mix it just with water. Oh, is it water. an awful taste? <laughs> it's an awful, it's an awful <laughs> taste. Yeah. No, I'd rather than just drink it. Just before I let you go, quick tips ahead of winter. Well, keep yourself warm, obviously, um, and not by consuming alcohol, okay? And um, make sure that, that you eat when you must eat. You know, many people only eat when they are hungry. And, of course, I'm talking about those that have access to food, obviously. Um, eat at regular time intervals because your body needs the building blocks that are found in food to perform the functions that it needs to perform. Remember that the fuels we need are primarily and only found in food. All right. Uh, Dr. Paolo Di, sir, thank you so much for talking to us as South Africans prepare for pleasure. winter and fifth wave of COVID-19. Numerous studies have shown the antiviral effects of spirulina with one study showing that it may help reduce severe COVID-19 risk by uh, 70%. We just spoke to Dr. Paolo De Valderos and this uh, about this research and findings. All right. Let's